Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video, it's going to be a nice, quick and simple one, in which we're just going to be adding custom collision to our meshes inside of Unreal Engine. So like I say, this is a very quick and easy one to do, so let's get right into it. So as you can see, here I have this static mesh imported, which I've got from Quixel Megascans, which I'll leave a link in the description down below and on screen now to how you can use Quixel Bridge within your projects. But what we're going to do is if I hit play, you can see we have this asset here, However, there's absolutely no collision on it. I can just run straight through. So obviously this isn't what we want. We're gonna want collision for this. Quick and simple way to do this is we need to open up the static mesh editor. So essentially find where your asset is and double click to open it up. And it should take you to this window here. Let me move onto the correct monitor. It should take you here. All we're gonna do in here is you should automatically have convex decomposition in the bottom right. If you don't, what you can do is go up to window up at the top and then just tick convex decomposition and this is going to allow us to add in our own collision. By default you'll have a whole count of 4, 16 max full verts and 100,000 hull precision. You can press apply and see what that is going to look like for you. Now you should see we have these green lines here which is the collision boundaries. So for me this is actually going to be pretty much perfect. What I'm going to do is save this, minimize this and then we'll hit play to test it. So you can see now if I was going to this we actually have collision. We can't just walk straight through it. However, I can still go into this underpass here. We have the collision where we need it to be. So now I wasn't actually expecting that to be that perfect straight off the bat because sometimes it's not. But for me, as you can see, it clearly is. And if you wanted it to be even more close, so you wanted it to be even closer, so maybe this middle bit here didn't have the right collision on it, you can just increase the whole precision to maybe say 2000, press apply, and you'll notice the green lines are now gonna be even closer to the edge of the mesh. So again, now it's kind of just going from that corner to that corner, but even closer, you can have it go straight down like this. So let's say even just go straight up to 500,000. Press apply, and we'll see this is again going to be even better. And this is basically the whole principle of it. We're just going to be changing the whole precision or just all of these different things down here to be able to get a better collision boundary for us. And again, you can obviously increase all of these as well to whatever values you liked. And we'll press apply, change all of these, and we're gonna be getting the collision here for us. Now, sometimes this might not work, so if you need it to be really close, really precise, and this still isn't getting it as close as you want it to be, what you can do is we're just gonna find on here where we have the collision complexity. If you were to change it from project default to use complex collision as simple and save that, you can see we have this here now. So essentially the kind of purpley white lines is going to be the collision and that's essentially going into every single vertex here. So this really isn't necessary for the majority of things. You're not going to want to do this for the majority of things because it would be very intensive because obviously we don't need the collision to be going individually into all of these little nooks and crannies here because the player is not going to be able to get in here anyway because of how big the player is. You just need a line down here like the green line. So those are the differences really. The white line is the really, really complex collision. The green line is the more basic one. We're obviously gonna want the green one, so I'll just change that back to project default. I'm gonna be using the green. We'll close this, and again, you can see this is the collision that we've got working for us. But I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've just set up the collision onto our static mesh, which we imported, because again, obviously we imported it. It had no collision, but now it does. It has the perfect amount which we want. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel out a lot. So again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.